I've got a bit of a question for you. Let's say you want a performance Volkswagen. Should you just get yourself a nice Golf GTI performance pack or should you spend extra, go the whole hog and get the Golf R? To find out, I'm going to compare their looks. Isn't it all smiley and happy? Critique their cabins. It's nice, but it's, it's a little bit more boring. See how they handle. And it's all you really need in the real world. And test their performance. Blimey, yeah, there we go, that's fast enough. But first, let's talk money. The Golf GTI Performance Pack starts from around £29,000, whereas the Golf R starts from just over £32. But what really matters is the price you actually pay at a dealer. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk, you can configure your ideal Golf GTI or Golf R and get the best price back from dealers and you can compare offers and buy at a price you're confident in. The Golf GTI and R have just been updated as part of a midlife facelift. The changes include digital dials and a new infotainment system, a bit more power and some new front and rear bumper and light designs. So which car looks the best? So there's various elements of each car which I prefer. For instance, I prefer the badge of the GTI basically because it's just been around longer. It's got more heritage. I also like this red bar, the way it goes into the headlamps. I mean, it really stands out and the honeycomb effect there. I think that's a nice touch. Whereas on the Golf R, you've got these slats and this silver bar, which is not so prominent. However, I prefer the lower part of the bumper. The slats work better down here and it's got a downturn mouth. It just makes it look more aggressive. It's like it's snarling. Whereas the GTI, if you look at it with the honeycomb effect and the upturned mouth, it's kind of, it's a bit all smiley and happy. Also, the R has this extra air intake there for the radiators. And so from the front, I think I prefer the Golf R, but not by much. Down the sides, they're pretty blooming similar. The only difference is, of course, the wheels. On these particular cars, I prefer the wheels on the GTI. Also, the GTI Performance Pack has red brake calipers, whereas the R has silvery calipers. And they just don't stand out as so much. Round the back. Now, this is an easy one. The reason I prefer the Golf R is because that has four tailpipes. That has two. It's as simple as that. However, let's not forget that with hot hatches, fun, not style, is what matters most. So which of these cars has the superior dynamics? The great thing about the Golf GTI is that it's a performance car with very few compromises. So the suspension is surprisingly comfortable. It's very easy to drive, you know, you can live with this car every day, no hassle. Yet it's also a lot of fun. Go on a twisty road, it handles brilliantly, and it's all you really need in the real world. And the performance back adds to that by giving you some bigger brakes. More importantly though, you get a clever front differential. Now what that does is when you're going through a turn, it allows the engine to send lots of the power to the outer wheel, so it effectively drags you around the corner and you really can feel it working and putting its power down. Essentially, you can drive it a bit quicker out of a turn than you could just a normal front wheel drive performance car without a clever diff. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's really impressive. But the question is, does the R feel much different? One thing that you notice is the fact that it's 100 kilograms heavier, and that means that when you're pushing it, it doesn't feel quite as nimble, it's not quite so responsive. That extra weight does make itself felt on the track. The thing is though, there's a reason for that extra weight, and it's the four-wheel drive system. Now, this makes a massive difference. So you're driving along, you're going into a turn, you want to get the power down. That GTI with the performance pack does a great job for a front wheel drive car. But while this R is front wheel drive most of the time, when you need it to, it will send power to the rear wheels and that just lets you slingshot out of corners <laughs> much quicker. You really notice it. Another thing to note about the Golf R is that you can get it with some choice upgrades that you can't get on the GTI Performance. For instance, you can get sticky cup tyres, which this car has. You can have upgraded lightweight brakes from the Club Sport S, which this car has. You can have the top speed de-restricted to 165 miles an hour. Another thing this car has is an upgraded titanium Akrapovic, or is that Akrapovic? You tell me in the comments box below. Um, exhaust, and it just... Well, it sounds better. Also, it's seven kilos lighter than the normal exhaust, so it saves a bit of weight. And really, while the R is heavier than the GTI, on the road, this matters less than on the track. While the all-wheel drive system makes it easy to drive quicker on an unfamiliar or slippery road. However, there is one area where the GTI feels more special. 
I really like the inside of the GTI because it gets red accents and that really helps lift the otherwise conservative Golf cabin. There's red accents on the dials, here on the seat as well, and this one's got honeycomb pattern, which is mimicked up here on the dash and obviously matches the honeycomb on the front grille. Now, people who remember the GTI of old, that car obviously came with tartan seats and you can get tartan seats with this car as well. Another thing that you get with the GTI, of course, is the GTI badging here. You also get it on the vehicle status. Look, it's a GTI, it's not a normal Golf. It's a nice touch. You'd think the more you pay, the more special the Golf would feel inside, but not so. The inside of the Golf R is strangely more subdued than that of the GTI, even though this is the range topping car. So the theme is generally black and silver. So you've got that effect up here on the dash. The seats are the same structure as those in the GTI, but once again, they're, they're a little bit more plain looking. So you've got black cloth and silver elements on it. There's black trim and silver elements with the R badge, the silver stitching on the steering wheel. That kind of matches the brake calipers, actually, the black and silver of those. On the instruments, you get blue dials rather than red effect, and it's the same on the main Navi display. And the picture of the car, of course, is the R rather than the GTI. It's nice, but it's, it's a little bit more boring. What's not boring, though, is the performance offered by either of these cars. The normal Golf GTI has 230 horsepower, but the performance pack ups this to 245 horsepower, and its 2-litre turbocharged engine has 370 newton metres of torque. The only thing is, though, that, well, we've kind of been sport of late with performance from hot hatches, so it's quick. It's a quick car. It goes well, but it doesn't exactly blow your socks off. Now, I'm not sure whether that's just because I'm so used to much quicker cars these days or because it's, it's not all that fast. I think we need to find out. This GTI Performance Pack is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. But I'm going to see what it really does. So I've got my data logging equipment up there. I've got the car in its sportiest setting. There you go. I'm just going to floor the brake, hold it, floor the throttle, engage the launch control. Let's go. Ooh, little bit of traction problem there because it's front wheel drive. And we're going pretty quickly. I think that's easily, <laughs> easily 60. Yes, there we go. Typical Volkswagen with its performance stats. 0 to 60, 5.7 seconds. You've got to be pleased with that. Right, I'm going to see what this engine's pulling power is like now. So I'm going to hold it in manual mode in fourth gear and then just floor it. It's going to stay in fourth and it's just going to pull. And I'm going to measure the performance between 30 and 50 miles an hour and 50 and 70. There we go. Right, let's see what we got. 30 and 50, it did it in 4.6 seconds and between 50 and 70, it did it in 4.8 seconds. It's all right. It's all right. Trouble is, if you're buying a performance car, all right, sometimes just won't cut it. Obviously, for many people, the reason to go for the Golf R over the GTI will be because of the added performance. So the car now has 310 horsepower from its 2-litre turbocharged engine, and it produces 400 newton metres of torque when you have it with a DSG automatic gearbox. And, yeah, this engine feels strong. It feels stronger than the GTI. It feels like a genuinely fast car. It really does. But what do the numbers say? The DSG version of this Golf R should be able to do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, which is quite a bit quicker than the GTI DSG with the performance pack. But what's the reality? So I'm going to launch it, and the procedure is exactly the same as the GTI. So here we go. Oh, that feels quicker. <laughs> Blimey, yeah, there we go. That's fast enough. What's it done? What has it done? 0 to 60. 4.2 seconds from a from a golf that's insane that is insane now let's see what the golf art does in terms of in gear roll on in fourth so from 30 to 50 and 50 to 70 let's find out okay it's picking up now <laughs> now it's really starting to motor wow Okay, that's enough. That felt faster. Definitely felt faster again. You notice it. Okay, 30 to 50. Mm, 3.7 seconds, but this is interesting. 50 to 70 is just 3.5 seconds. That's a big difference. 
This engine is wicked. Just so you know, my data logger is working in miles per hour, whereas these car speedos are showing kilometers an hour. All right, got that? Good. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, I reckon if you want a performance Volkswagen, you just have to get yourself the Golf R. It's just a brilliant machine. There, said it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and of course, comment in the box below. Click up there to subscribe to our channel, over there to watch my full in-depth review of the normal Volkswagen Golf, or over there for my vlog on the GTE and Golf E versions.